As you can see, uh, our team um, already decided on a specific case study we would work on within, of course, the uh, general frame of partial enforcement of EU rules. The chosen case study represents a field of intervention of EU regulations uh, posed on domestic production and consumption of food. Amongst other topics that reflect this problem frame, pig slaughtering and sheep slaughtering uh, are chosen due to their cultural, sociocultural importance. More precisely, practices of pig and sheep slaughtering and meat processing are traditionally comprised in a whole set of folk customs. Some of the research done on how people perceive EU rules that regulate or would regulate um, especially pig slaughtering practice point at uh, encroaching the complex field of the so-called ordinary everydayness that is culturally rooted and socially uh, functioning practices. As such, the question became a ready-made weapon in hands of Eurosceptics striving to produce moral panic and, in consequence, people's adherence to specific political goals. On the other hand, at the other side of a political spectrum, specularization of the case was and is met by degrading of negative effects of EU regulations would produce in actual and local specific surroundings. A symbolic potential of legal interventions in the field of everyday life, or uh, more precisely, its removal from the domain of private decision-making and private preferences to the domain of state legislation should to be crucial for the important part of the process of Europeanization, namely the Europe's um, intentions as estimated by a cultural subject. Confused by noise in the communication channel, <coughs> filled with contradictory explanations. Still, especially when it comes to imposing of European sanitary measures, it would be noted that former pig slaughtering practice and also sheep slaughtering practice and cattle slaughtering practice in general, together with former legislative instruments, seem to be safe enough, more or less. Specifically, in the case of Kurban Bayram, where the religious rules determine slaughtering practices, the rules are, in some aspects, completely synchronous with EU regulations, while in other aspects, they are even more demanding. This could speak in favor of the assessment that EU regulations are actually underestimating and we lead to disarray in the domain that has been regulated by the cultural subject's long-term experience. If confirmed, this presumption would inscribe the case in question in the dominant perception of Europeanization as a process aimed at civilizing its subjects, which in terms of national redistribution of cultural roles, interferes with controversies along urban-rural divide and is, in principle, in favor of new political elites' political legitimization. Lastly, with a, a particular sensitive area of individual agricultural production, where EU regulations were translated also as powerful and far-reaching cultural intervention in terms of shifting the concept of the way of life into market-recognizable profession, these regulations are also producing unwanted but real socioeconomic consequences. Migrations from agricultural regions that sometimes reach almost mass proportions are among the most dramatic ones. Also, moving of domestically produced food and naturally available foods 
into the zone defined by capital results in further empowerment of already poor social strata. Many studies have been done on the consequences of the EU entry on the performance of agricultural sector in various countries, including a recent mm -hmm. debate on the uh, relocalization of food production and consumption. This applies also to producing and processing pork meat in part-time family farms, where the proprietor is a family which cannot earn their livelihood exclusively through farming, but is dependent on off-farm income sources and whose main aim for keeping pigs is own consumption. One of the examples is a study based on a field work carried out by national teams in 10 European uh, countries as part of the CORASOM, a cognitive approach to rural sustainable development, where package <coughs> of the dynamics of knowledge in the valorization of local food in many regions, as is shown. Local lay knowledge, often exchanged and circulated for informal social networks, is a dominant form of knowledge used. Spanish and Portuguese fieldwork, while the same is the case in many uh, Italian rural areas, for example, <coughs> showed that pig slaughtering was an important cultural, social, and economic event <coughs> for families and communities a cultural and anthropological component of social life involving a shared effort and fostering solidarity in the community. So, the authors of the study concluded that it is clear that scientific, general, and theoretical perspectives are not the most relevant to these experiences. The best uh, experts are not scientists from universities or bureaucratic managerial experts from government development agencies. Scientific knowledge may only be a starting point, but it needs to be integrated, adapted, and mediated by those with expertise and trained in specific traditional and artisan models of food production and by those who know the place. As for the animal welfare, it is often stated that in old EU member states, animal welfare uh, directives developed as a step-by-step -step process, but for the new member states, um, it appeared to be a time-lapsed process. Also for them, the rules that are created